Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to another interview for The Art of Sherlock Holmes. And this evening we're interviewing Richard Dean Starr, who's one of the authors from the uh, first anthology for West Palm Beach. So good evening, Richard. Uh, good evening. So you're, you're in the States, so it's probably more like uh, uh, the afternoon or the morning. Where are you dialing in from? Uh, Arizona at the moment, but we're based in Los Angeles. And, and what's the weather like in Arizona? Uh, overcast and it was raining earlier, but uh, now it's clearing up. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's, it's raining here in London. What a surprise. Um, but I, <laughs> I, I can assure you I'm, I'm sitting here in my West Palm Beach uh, T-shirt, which I wear for all the interviews. Uh, so it makes me feel like I'm, I'm in West Palm. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh, the first bit of writing you did, Richard. Uh, my first published work was a series of book reviews in a Los Angeles trade newspaper, uh, now long gone, uh, back when I was a teenager about a thousand years ago. I remember being astonished to learn that you could actually get paid to write, especially at that age. Fantastic. Uh, but I understand you've been involved in, in several films, so we've got a couple of them here uh, uh, on the slide. So can you tell us a little bit about them and also what, what was the most fun film to work on? Uh, I've done about 21 films total and about 10 of them have received some kind of credit on IMDb, the uh, Internet Movie Database. Uh, probably uh, the most recent one we did was a feature film called Mississippi Murder, starring Malcolm McDowell and Luke Goss from Hellboy 2. Uh, I was co-credited with the story and also extensively worked an early version of the script uh, with the assistance of my partner, Aaron, who writes professionally as E.R. Bauer. Sadly, uh, you know, with, as is often the case, the movie deviated greatly from our finished product. Uh, still, hearing some of the words she and I helped write being spoken by a legendary actor like Malcolm McDowell, that was a lot of fun and a, a very cool experience. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, I, I've, I've written one screenplay myself, and uh, I have to say that the, 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 the process of doing a screenplay from your own novel um, is quite painful. I found it was, it, I was stripping so much out of my writing by getting it ready for the screen. Um, is it a tough process? It can be. Uh, Mississippi Murder was an adaptation of a novel uh, called Artists Die Best in Black. And it, it, it was a process that uh, was a, a bit exhausting. So you have my empathy there. Yeah, and what, what's the most fun film you've worked on? Uh, at the moment, well, the one that was the most fun I can't talk about because I have a confidentiality agreement uh, for it, but uh, it, it was a, a movie that uh, had a really major star in it and uh, getting to, again, it was the same experience with Mr. Murder, getting to see him or hear him, as the case may be, say words that we, that we wrote uh, was really pretty neat. Oh, fantastic. And uh, you also done quite a bit of anthology work. So uh, uh, you mentioned Hellboy there, one of the actors, but you've also written, uh, you've been involved in a, in a Hellboy anthology. Yes, uh, Hellboy Otter Jobs, which was a real privilege, uh, edited by Christopher Golden, uh, the great uh, suspense and uh, horror writer. Fantastic. And uh, the, the, the uh, image we've got here on the right hand side here, this is a uh, a, cr a kind of a crossover with Dan Shamble and um, Kolchak. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, uh, Kevin J. Anderson and I did a comic book script uh, that uh, teamed up his Dan Shamble zombie PI character with Kolchak the Night Stalker, uh, which is kind of a beloved character with horror fans. And uh, the comic book was a, a lot of fun to do. And uh, it was not only published in, I think, either four or five variant covers, but also uh, the script was published by Gauntlet Press uh, as part of one of his books as a signed limited edition. Oh, fantastic. So um, you've done a bunch of anthologies. So um, on, on, we've got a couple of images here. So um, Wyatt Earp and Zorro, uh, tell us a bit about that. Well, Zorro was uh, a real privilege to be involved with. Uh, it's kind of a bucket list item for me. And uh, we had a whole bunch of great writers, uh, a lot of New York Times bestselling writers participated. Uh, and we got to tell some great stories of Zorro. Uh, and it was the first anthology of original stories ever done in the 85 year history of the character. Wyatt Earp, the Justice Writers, on the other hand, is a graphic novel that I did. Uh, it's a Western that, that uh, in a rather unlikely way, has to team up Wyatt Earp with Geronimo, Bell Star, you know, and other characters. So that that was a real challenge and a lot of fun as well. Fantastic. And um, let's talk a little bit about um, Sherlock Holmes because obviously, um, you know, uh, 
Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is a is a big inspiration for for many mystery writers, and and you in, got involved with um, uh, E.R. Bauer again on, on this one. Yeah, we we uh, were very lucky. I, I use that word a lot, unfortunate a lot, because it's true. Uh, to do this uh, follow up to. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, The Crossover's Casebook, edited by Howard Hopkins, who unfortunately passed away some time ago. And we got to do the follow-up volume uh, with a lot of great writers, and, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, E.R. Bauer is a, a, not only a great writer, but a really good uh, editor, uh, and it was a pleasure working with her on it. And how did you get um, involved with Sherlock Holmes? What was your first experience? You know, it's funny that you asked that. Uh, I first came across the stories of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, probably around the age of 11 or 12. But that said, I probably learned about Holmes the first time after seeing Basil Rathbone in the role a few years before that. Uh, and and does, is, has Rathbone your, stayed as your, your go-to person in terms of the adaptation, or are there other adaptations that you've enjoyed over the years? Uh, it's probably my main one, and in that it was probably my first. But I've liked other ones since then. And and your favorite home story uh, from the canon? I'd say the first, A Scandal in Bohemia, but really I like so many of them. Uh, the Adventures of the Speckled Band is another that I really enjoy. Now we've done we've done a number of adaptations of Scandal. Um, probably the, the one that you would very much enjoy is uh, by Petter Koppel, who uh, is a Czech Republic uh, graphic artist, and he combines two stories, two Conan Doyle stories always in, in his graphic novel adaptations. They're quite big. So I think Scandal in Bohemia is maybe 160 pages. It's quite a wow. long uh, graphic novel, but he won um, the Czech Republic Graphic Novel of the Year Award uh, for that book. And he, in the same year, won the, the, the Graphic Artist of the Year Award um, for that book. Uh, so, uh, what, we had to translate it from the Czech language, though. It's absolutely fantastic. Probably, uh, uh, I should give a shout out to uh, Jay Ganguly, who's the chairman of the um, Sherlock Holmes Society of India, because it was her um, pestering me to, to get it translated and release it in English uh, that made it all happen. Um, and it was the first time we actually did a Kickstarter uh, when we did that project, because we did the, the translation of that. Um, in, addition, in addition to Conan Doyle, who, who, what other writers uh, do, would you cite as uh, inspiration? Uh, you know, this is probably going to be my lengthiest answer, but I'll try to keep it short. Uh, Dean Koontz was easily my biggest inspiration, especially his groundbreaking cross-genre novel, Strangers. Uh, the writer, uh, SF writer Robert Silverberg was another. The fantasy writer Tim Powers, who wrote the novel on Stranger Tides, which was partial source material for the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Uh, also, John D. McDonald with Travis McGee fame. Robert Heinlein, James M. Cain, Postman Always Drinks Twice, Edgar Rice Burroughs, the Western writers Zane Gray and Max Brand. Those are probably the ones I think of most often. I could probably go on. Fantastic. And um, let's move on to um, the art of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, so this project brings together 15 artists from the West Palm Beach area. Uh, it was conceived and is being curated by Phil Groek, who's a two-time um, Sherlock Holmes novelist in his own right. And he came up with this amazing concept of taking Sherlock Holmes stories that have been written and pairing them up with artists and have the artist create a, a painting, a, a piece of art from, from that story. Um, so your, your story, uh, Sherlock Holmes and the Other Eye, uh, how does it feel, Richard, to, to, that an artist will have spent weeks creating a beautiful painting from your story? It's always a great feeling, and in this instance, it's a real honor. Uh, seeing something that came out of your head made real is, in a sense, a kind of magic that's difficult to describe. Uh, in the case of our home story, the illustrated characters were far more vivid than my co-author, E.R. Bauer, and I could have imagined them, I think. Uh, we both love the art, and we're thrilled to be part of this project and to be working with both MX and uh, our terrific editor, Phil Growick. Yeah, and, and obviously we'll, we'll, we'll be sharing the art uh, with the, uh, the author soon. We've kept everything under wraps, everything very secret. We've shown some glimpses uh, in the artist profiles that we've been posting up on the blog and, and on LinkedIn. Um, but um, we should mention that the, the art is coming together on the 9th of May. So the book is out on the 25th of May and, and uh, already uh, getting pre-orders uh, on Amazon and the various different bookstores. But on the 9th of May, um, all the art comes together in West Palm Beach at a, a very high-end uh, gallery called the Ann Norton Sculpture Gardens. 
So all the art will be exhibited um, and it will be there for a few weeks until the 25th of May. And we have then a global event which all fans can participate in, um, which will be hosted at Undershaw in uh, uh, Surrey, which is the, the former home of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, at Stepping Stone School. And we'll be cutting across live as part of that to uh, the gallery. So everybody will be able to see uh, all of the art. We'll be doing some interviews with the artists uh, as well. So hopefully you'll be able to dial into that, uh, Richard, on the, on, the, uh, on the 25th. And maybe if, you, uh, if it's not too far from Arizona to West Palm, pop over to the gallery and see, see the art live. Yeah, there's a real possibility that we may actually make it down for the event. Uh, I had actually talked about that with Phil. Fantastic. Uh, uh, I re I'm, I, I, I've weakened and uh, I've booked my plane ticket. I'm, I'm going to go over to the gallery uh, and, and see the art. I can't wait to, to see it all uh, live. It looks fantastic uh, in print, but um, uh, it's going to be, a, a, I think, an amazing experience to see it live. So thank you so much for your time, uh, Richard, and look forward to uh, seeing more, uh, more work and uh, more film work uh, from you as well in, in the near future. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity.